thanks. It's, it's really an honor to, to come here um, to New York and, and be able to share what we just completed. Uh, you guys are great. A lot of progress here. Talk about you all the time with your activism. I'm actually on vacation, so I came out in Chicago, um, which is great. And I want to thank Cindy for uh, bringing me out and Jeff Brady uh, in the back and some other people who were really instrumental in this film. The film that we're going to show tonight has not been released, so please do not record it. Uh, we have a contract to release it actually on the 18th at, the, uh, at an event in uh, our, our premiere in Los Angeles. Um, but I really am excited about it, and I think, uh, I think this will be more effective in terms of waking people up to what we're dealing with uh, than the first film. The first film has been estimated to have been seen by over uh, 10 or 11 million people, um, which had an impact and, and started uh, movements in, in getting uh, the situation addressed. We're hoping and we believe that this next film that we're going to show you tonight is going to have an even greater impact. Before we get started, how many people are aware of the chemtrail geoengineering issue? Know it's happening. Most people, anybody not aware of it? Um, is, is this the first time that you're being introduced? Okay, a couple of people. And it's okay because I think we're all in the same boat. And is there anybody in the room that, that's aware of it but just does not believe that this is happening? You've done research. Jeff Brady. Turn, turn. And, 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 and that's okay because yeah, I think most of us who now have come to realize that this is a reality went through that process. You know, the first person that told me about this, I thought they were absolutely crazy. It wasn't until... Uh, I began researching and really got the opportunity, and it was a God-given opportunity, uh, to make films. And for some reason, I was called to go around the country and around the world and, and address this. Um, so uh, hopefully tonight you'll leave empowered. Uh, hopefully tonight you're going to leave uh, with an activist heart. And I think that's the most important thing, because we cover a lot of things that, that could be perceived as, as fearful, and, and we don't want anyone to leave in fear. We want you to leave in faith, faith believing that we collectively have the power, we have the ability to, to make a difference and, and to stop this and, and to restore our planet. So, so I want you to keep, keep that in mind. Without saying too much more, let's get it rolling. Thanks again for allowing me to share. My name is Scott Stevens. I uh, was a television weatherman for 20 years. These chemtrails are absolutely required to impact whatever weather event they were designing. And the trails were an absolute necessary ingredient for them to achieve their weather modification goals. Chemtrails are a key element in the whole thing because they're obviously a way of uh, putting a highly reflective material into the atmosphere. With cloud seeding, the cooling will be achieved by making clouds reflect a bit more sunlight back to space than they would otherwise, and less sunlight reaching the surface would tend to cool the planet. So let's say we were doing geoengineering because we wanted to make uh, the weather a little bit better. The more we see these trails in the sky, the less rain we get. Virtually all scientific data, even from the proponents of geoengineering, state clearly saturating the atmosphere with particulates will create drought. Much has been made of this issue of damage from precipitation. If the issue is understanding the climatic response, which was I think most of where this was going, and it's exactly where the precipitation gets higher and lower. There will be monsoon failures during that period. There will be huge hurricanes. It's likely to cause some damage in some places. The global studies indicate there will be some impact on precipitation patterns, and obviously there's a lot more opportunity for work in that area. Just seeding can be pretty effective for the clouds we explored, but the interactions between seeding and precipitation in the form of drizzle are really complex. So we're finding the aerosols, the metal particulates, the weather engineering, whether it's scalar, ionic, or organ, or the chi of the atmosphere, all of those can be used and, and leveraged to create weather events that are 
several standard deviations or outside what would be typically normal. Before jumping on the chemtrail bandwagon was I needed a motive. Without a motive, you can't say what they're doing and why they're doing it. You have to have a motive. Uh, what other derivatives are products that uh, commercial hedgers would use, such as an insurance company or an energy company, to hedge risk that's associated with weather? Precipitation or a hurricane or general heating days is what they're basically called. Certain temperatures or you know higher temperatures are going to associate with um, more energy, so they're going to want to hedge that risk. If you can structure a product where you say, I'm going to buy insurance against it raining more than 10 inches in this area. If my risk is, say, like, say a million dollars, but I'm insuring for $10 million, and then I can make it rain and collect the premium on the $10 million? Well, of course. So the agenda was drought. The agenda was to kill the storm, at least in that one particular spot. You're reducing the food security of people through deploying these kinds of approaches that potentially two billion people could have their food disrupted by such interventions. It affects farmers by their ability to plan what they're going to be growing. You see a tremendous and significant loss of property and uh, crop production. Uh, many times this will cause farms to go out of business. And when farmers go out of business, they usually have to sell. And then if there's somebody waiting in the wings to buy their land and then uh, turn that uh, land over to the production of genetically modified crops, you can see where there would be kind of a strategic advantage there. The fact that it's cheap isn't necessarily a good thing at all, as I'll come to in a second. The fact that it's cheap is part of the whole hard problem of governance. The fact that it's cheap means any small state or, or even conceivably individuals could do this, and that is a very dangerous thing. There's only probably under $10 million per year and maybe far less than that being spent on geoengineering research. Um, it's a mix of a handful of government grants and some private money, including support uh, from Bill Gates. There is a line of research on what's called geoengineering. The climate getting worse means that many years their crops won't grow. There'll be too much rain, not enough rain. Uh, things will change in ways that their fragile environment simply can't support. If Bill Gates invests in geoengineering and he profits from the destruction through his investment in Monsanto. Monsanto is coming in and they're saying, we have a solution for your problems. Basically, if you control the weather and the seed source, you essentially control all food production. You can kill a storm in place. That's easy to do with HARP. You just change the polarization, you change the ionization of the atmosphere, and the storm will fall apart. HARP is actually an acronym for High Altitude Active Aurora Research Program. And it, uh, in the patents for the HARP system, it describes what is uh, detailed as ionospheric heating. It creates situations where crops are either uh, so severely flooded that they're destroyed. And so it's very easy to add those particulates of aluminum, barium, and whatever else they want to put in there. And as you add heat to that, those particulates then radiate the heat into the atmosphere and it warms. Let's just say the storms can develop more violently, more quickly, um, in places that are not necessarily as uh, where you would expect them to be. We have altered weather patterns that are also stated as consequences of geoengineering. Since these global weather modification programs appear to have been ramped up so radically in the last decade, our, our weather here has changed unimaginably. And we've got technologies available to us now that can do, you know, continent-sized uh, projects. Is all of the persistent trails behind it. So that tells me, Michael, that they are engineering this storm to a great degree. Now all of this stuff is chemtrail debris or chemtrail clouds that had been laid down over Utah and over, over southern Colorado earlier in the day. What we see in the sky matches virtually all geoengineering patents. The fact that hundreds of lab tests taken from all over the globe match exactly the ingredients stated in geoengineering patents as primary elements. But not very much. And there's certainly uncertainty about how bad those effects will be, but they will be extremely bad. One of the most hardy brush forms known, the manzanita, and it, it looks like it's been hit with insecticide. And we're seeing this throughout the ecosystem. And there's virtually no growth, and we see whole plants, whole mature plants, 50, 60, 70 year old, almost trees die out for no reason whatsoever that, that we can find other than the contaminated soils 
Because if it's in the rain, it's in the soil. And now we see incredibly hardy organisms dying uh, for no other cause that we can find other than the contamination in our rain from these aerosol operations. And so you get ecosystem collapses. And if you control the weather, you're gonna control the planet. It's that simple. Since the release of When the World Are They Spraying, millions of people have woken up to these crimes against nature and humanity. We believe the next prudent step, not only in waking, but also activating millions of more people and moving closer towards holding the governments and corporations responsible accountable is addressing the weather control aspect of these damaging programs. We can't do it alone and we need your support. This entire production will be funded by private donations and pre-orders. So see the website right at the bottom of your screen and see how you can get involved in bringing this message out to millions of people. The work we're doing will provide cover for others to come out. And I'm most interested in whistleblowers. Um, you had your hand up. And if you have your hand up for a very long time, sometimes it's challenging, just jump up because I, I try to get to everybody. Yes. How come we don't see this topic in the press? <laughs> well, I, I, think, I think that's a good question. Look at, look at your nightly news. Who, who's advertising? Monsanto. It's Monsanto. It's GE. It's the very corporations that are profiting from this. We have a media that's controlled by a very small group of people. And it's, oh, yes. And if, if you look at the interests that control it, it's the very interests that are profiting from these changes at the expense from us. So that's why we have to become the media. That's why it's our responsibility to reach out to our community, to reach out to our neighbors with this message, bring this message into the workplace. So important. You had a question back there. Yes. What I don't understand is within, within us, we're supporting a system by, by purchasing genetically modified foods, uh, by, by um, paying into a system that, that, that is, is literally creating war. Um, but I think you wanted a, a deeper question than that. Well, we understand and, that, right? Yeah. Um, my, my next film, and what, if, if I'm called to do it, it's going to be. Who in the hell is spraying? And we really want to look into specifically who is doing this, you know, what, what, um, what, what corporations are involved. And I think Cindy's going to help me with that because she's already been, uh, been researching that. Jeff Brady, by the way, he did a lot of our, our East Coast interviews for the film. So I really want to acknowledge uh, the importance of his. They're available. Uh, I, I got here late, but I didn't see a lot of evidence. I didn't see anybody flying in chemtrails and taking samples of the aluminum. Uh, I didn't see analysis of the soil uh, that indicates that these aluminum <coughs> things are accumulating. It seems to me before I would want to bring a suit uh, to stop this, I'd want some evidence in my pocket. I think that's fair, and you should watch our first film. And then if he came in late, we covered most of that okay. in, in the first part about, uh, of it. But there's plenty of documentation. Uh, there definitely is. That is. Website? Yes, yeah. Well, that question re lies within each and every one of us because we have to get active in, in addressing this. You had a question? Yeah. Um, do we you know, these are worldwide programs. Um, there are a number of different corporations and defi definitely military involvement. Uh, but again, the, these are questions. There, we know a lot of things, but there, there are literally thousands of questions that still remain to be answered. And I think that's where we need to get involved. Um, again, we cannot rely on our political system uh, to, to blow the whistle, and we certainly can't rely on the corporations behind it and our media. So we have to start taking our power back by getting active and not being dependent on, on other people. And I know you had a question. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Can I pass it out? Please do. All of my work is also available for free, and that's one thing I encourage, and I hope everybody that gets a DVD. <laughs> Burn 20,000 copies if you can. I'm, I've handed out on the first film in my community. Wherever I travel, I, I have DVDs. I hand them out all day. My community in, in Hawaii is awakened to this. My community in Los Angeles is awakened to this issue. Uh, and we can all do that. And, and I think that now that we're 
have come into this awareness, I think we have an obligation to do that, just to hand it out. And, and it's a very effective tool. And it, it will be available on, on YouTube as well. Hit the internet, Facebook, social networking sites. This is a message that just cannot wait. And it's in a very timely manner. This is an engineered drought that we're having around the world. People are asking questions. We have the answer. And, and your first video is available on the web now? It, it is as well. It is yeah. the ones that we're doing. Yeah, yeah. Yes. What can you tell me about Chemtra busters? Can you buy them? Can you make them? Are you supposed to stop the fallout from coming down on your property? I have heard of those. Um, I have not had time to investigate those, but I'm, I know that there's a lot of information available uh, online for that, so I'm not uh, an authority on that. Who's had their hand up for a very long time? You, you in the back. I, I, I think so. So, you know, that, that again, that falls within us to use this film as a tool, you know, buy some commercial copies, uh, get, get them into the schools. I, I think that's absolutely something that we need to do. And you had your hand up for a very long time. Did you for a long time? I've, I do a lot of street activism. I, you know, I grew up in, it depends on where you are, you know, and, it, and I think knowing your audience and knowing where your audience is at, this issue goes very deep, much deeper than weather control. There are a lot of different agendas, but you have to know who you're talking to, and everybody has an entry point for truth, but you have to find that. So um, I grew up in a, in a pretty well-to-do su uh, suburb of Chicago, and many of the people that I grew up with are really vibrate to the corporate system. So, you know, population control, I can't go in with that message and, and talk about population control because that's beyond uh, the people that I grew up with. I live now in what many people would call the ghetto. I, I live in, uh, you know, by South Central Los Angeles. And the people in my community have been exposed for generations to, to similar programs. So when I talk to them, I say, see, see this in the sky? I said, that could have something to do with the depleting your health with population control. They get it. But I can't bring that message into where I grew up, but weather control, talking about derivatives, talking about the corporate interests, that's a very effective message. So there are a lot of deep truths. You have to find what somebody is willing to accept, because if you go, with too much truth to somebody where this is a new subject, you could actually push them away. So test the waters, you know. And, and, and sometimes, you know, I, I ask people, you've noticed the, the weather is changing, right? Yeah, see that line in the sky? Some people believe that could be uh, part of an agenda to change our weather. And that's been a good one as of late. People are like, really? And you say, yeah, it's about geoengineering. And that's usually a good entry point. Um, I think you've had your hand up. And then we'll get to you. Thanks for sharing. Uh, getting back to the activism, uh, a lot of powerful things are happening, and so good to be, uh, so excited to come here. Suffolk County, great job with, with the ordinance and, and really creating an, an awareness. Give yourselves a hand for that. Um, we have one in Maui. It's gotten, I think, through its third stage now, so we believe it's going to get passed, uh, which will uh, ban geoengineering programs uh, without an environmental impact statement, which they'll never get, and informed consent. So we went in, you know, to the mayor's office. We didn't say, you know, this is eugenics, this is killing you. We came in with, with a very low level of truth, something that they were willing to accept. Um, and we sat down. We had a lot of battles because people have been calling them up, swearing at them, screaming, saying, you're trying to kill us. And, and when, when they heard that we wanted to, we called them up and we said, we want to talk to you about the issue of geoengineering. They said, we don't know what geoengineering is. We said, well, it's the chemtrail issue. They said, no way. We're not, you guys are those crazy nuts that are calling us up, <laughs> screaming on the phones every day. So my friend Bruce had to do a lot of damage control. And he said, listen, you know, we, we just want to talk to you. So we did. We had a group meeting. And again, we brought documentation for geoengineering uh, and went in just again, uh, uh, knees deep of truth and, you know, uh, deep in a seat full of truth. And they became concerned, and now we have that ordinance. But that can be done everywhere, and we're hoping that these ordinances will be a model for people uh, around the world. Geoengineers now are calling for emergency geoengineering. They want to start legally. They want to take these illegal programs 
and make them legal by 2013. And I believe the reason is that people around the world are beginning to wake up. So if we have ordinances established in counties around the country and around the world, they will have one hell of a legal battle when they try to make these programs legal. So we're literally dealing with, with a race for time, and that's why it's so important to get active now. Uh, one question there, and then I'll get back, then I'll get to you. You know, it was something that, that we definitely considered, but we're trying to reach the masses uh, with this yeah. message. And I think those of us who can see b between the lines are aware that this is population control. I certainly address it. Uh, but it's way beyond 90% of our population's uh, ability to receive. It's very much of a truth, but it does push a lot of people away. So our audience with this film uh, we're expecting, you know, this to have a much greater impact than the first. And we're looking at creating change. We're not looking at telling everybody every bit of truth that we know. We're looking at having the most effective impact in the most prudent way. And I thought it was prudent to leave that out for that reason. Yeah. yeah. So. Or Gallon's disease, uh, Georgia Guystones, uh, are they? All, you know, all realities. Um, and, and when you sit down in a film, you literally have thousands of, Ideas, you have a limited budget. We were on a very, very tight budget. We were on about 10% of the budget on this film than the first film, believe it or not. On a very, very tight budget, and you have a limited amount of time. So, uh, again, we, we think this was the best way to go. And then I think one more question. I know that we have some other speakers that, that I really want to listen to as well, and I know that you had your hand up. Yes. And again, I'm at the beginning, it says an investigation into one of the many agendas associated with these. We want it to keep it precise, yeah. driven, and I think we did that. And I think we're going to see an incredible result. We did mention, you know, death in Africa um, in there to throw this in. But, but again, this is weather control. We can dig deeper, you know. We can dig into more gallons. We can do, you know, for call to do this and, and address those in a, in a one-hour film like we did with this. So I don't know where the road's going to go, but... You know, I'll walk down that path when, if it's well, opened up. But down that path, I hope you talk to the natural path and the doctors. Just look up yeah, I've, we, D Society. Already, already, yeah, I've been talking to a lot of people uh, about it, have been in touch. And I think I'd like to take one more question and then kind of pass it along. But I'll be available in the back. Has anybody honestly had their hand up for a long time? <laughs> that, <laughs> my apologies. <laughs> So, um, what I do is, you know, I've got a, I've got Michael Ford speaking from E and H. I can do back two of them, thirteen and out, thirteen every ten minutes. Okay. So I just want to say you have to be able to make them interested in taking it from you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. And I think that's that's a very good policy. Look at this, and maybe we'll even put, um, you know, a downloadable. Um, something, yeah, flyer to put with the film. I think that's a great idea, so I'll probably start working on that. Feedback is always good. It's going to be really nice going into our premiere. Uh, we're streaming live uh, on the 18th as well. Please uh, email your, uh, your email list um, uh, with our website, Why in the World Are They Spraying? Let your friends know if you think this film uh, has the ability to, to make a difference, which I certainly do. Please let people know about this. Um, we want everybody watching that premiere. As a result, people are going to upload it. It's going to go viral on the 19th for sure. The world will hear this message. We will get much closer to getting these programs stopped. And on a final note, these programs will not, cannot uh, go on forever. Um, and and it, it really depends on us. How long do we want to allow them to go on? For me, the answer is not one more day, and I hope that we can all. And, and I hope that we all can feel that way and take, whether it's five minutes, five seconds in the day to do something, to send an email out or tell somebody at work or in our community uh, about this. Um, the, the growth of the movement has been so incredible in the past two years. Um, that's because of the collective consciousness and people just taking that time. So let's go out and make it happen. Thanks again for allowing me to share. It was wonderful. See you again.